From Idaho's News Channel 7, this is Viewpoint. Welcome to Viewpoint. I'm Doug Petcash. The May 19th Idaho primary election is this Tuesday, and it's an historic election. Not so much because of who and what people are voting on, but because of how they are voting. For the first time ever, Idaho is holding an, all, an election entirely by absentee ballot, by mail. That's because of the state of emergency in Idaho in regards to the coronavirus. So on May 19th, you can't go to your polling place and cast your vote in person, but that date is still very important. You have to request your absentee ballot no later than that day and then fill it out and get it back to your county clerk's office by June 2nd so it can be counted. We'll talk about the nuts and bolts of it all as we help you prepare for Election Day and explain how the state and Ada County have been doing the same. The presidential primary was held back in March. This primary is for congressional, state legislative and county races. Many voters will also have bonds and levies to decide. The Republican primary is open only to registered Republicans. The Democratic ballot is open to all registered voters. There's also a nonpartisan ballot. That ballot will only have nonpartisan races, such as races to be a judge, as well as bond or levy issues, if there are any in your area. Also, if you are registered with a political party, you cannot change your party affiliation. But if you are unaffiliated, you can register as a Republican to vote in that primary. You don't need to register Democrat if you want to vote in that one because it's an open primary. My first guest today is Deputy Secretary of State Chad Houck. He heads up the elections division there. Chad, thanks for your time today. Thank you, Doug. So how big of an undertaking has this been to go to an all absentee ballot election? Well, it's been nothing short, as you said, of, of uh, everything that we could do to make this to make this happen at this point in time. Uh, as you know, Idaho's never gone this far into absentee voting. Uh, we have a new system that we had to create to try and open up and expedite online registration uh, because we knew that with this volume, there was no way that counties would actually be able to handle all of the paper ballot request forms that would come in. So we needed a way to speed that up and, and put that into place. So that was something we had to create uh, literally from scratch right before uh, we opened up in March for this election. Uh, counties have been working nonstop to try and process the total number of ballots. So procedurally, it's just completely different for us. What's been the response to it in terms of the number of ballots requested and sent? Uh, online so far, we've been in excess of 160,000 ballots requested there. Uh, total number is a little awful close to double that, almost 320,000 ballots that have been requested and processed by the counties at this point. Now, to put that in perspective, uh, the presidential primary back in March, we had 225,000 total ballots cast, and of those, only about 45,000 were absentee or early voting. So you can see there's a, just a, a significant, more than 10 times uh, the number of absentee ballots being processed by the counties. That definitely puts it in perspective. And so you sent those out, and I think you told me you sent out 560,000 ballot request forms. Now those ballots are, you know, they're out there. What are you expecting for turnout in terms of people actually filling out those forms, the, the ballots themselves, and sending them back in? So we don't know what those numbers are because again, we haven't had an opportunity for this many to be out in the public. But as you mentioned, we did send out uh, about 560,000 of these postcard forms. And you can, if you've got yours, you just take it there, split it off and uh, separate that. Mail this back to your county. It's already pre-addressed. I think this one's a uh, Canyon County one, for example. And then what you'll get back in the mail is this package. And in this package, you've got your ballot request or you've got your ballot form. You open that up, you're gonna find several pieces inside of there. And the key is that you get this ballot inside this privacy envelope. And then that entire piece goes back in the return envelope with your signature on the back so that it can be processed by the counties. That's what we're expecting to see. We're, uh, like I said, with over 300,000 out, we're looking potentially at record returns. If those come in at, at high numbers, if it's 80%, 90%, we could see a greater turnout than what we saw in the presidential primary in March. And a typical primary, uh, a typical Bay primary is what, about 25% of total voter turnout? And 
You're it's expecting in that area. More. It depends. It just depends on whether or not there is a highly interested race at the top of the ticket in some cases. So we uh, we have Mr. Rich at the top of the ticket this year on the Republican side. He's uncontested in the Republican primary, so that's not a huge top of ticket race on that side. And there's other interesting races, certainly across the board, and they're all interesting at the local level, but it's those statewide races that generally tend to drive turnout and uh, not a tremendous number of those this year. But interesting that it could be a higher turnout than the presidential primary itself. Wow. So what are the key dates? Why is May 19th so important, even though it is not the in-person voting day this time around? So back to those pieces of paper again, May 19th is the last day to get this piece back to the county clerk. That's your ballot request form. Um, you can turn those in directly at county clerk's offices. They should have ballot boxes outside. If you have any questions, you can contact your county clerk directly. Uh, that information is available on Idaho Votes. If you go down to the footer of the website, you'll see co county contact information. And then June 2nd is the date that those ballots have to be back to the county clerk June 2nd by 8 p.m. And again, those will be dropped off by hand in front of the courthouses in those ballot boxes or returning them back by mail. And can someone request the ballot online through May 19th? Absolutely, so up until eight o'clock as well, online by May, uh, to May 19th at eight o'clock, they can make that online ballot request as well. Now, normally people could register to vote at their polling place on election day. Is there an alternative for that now that it's an all absentee ballot election? Absolutely. So that was one of the other challenges in trying to set up this election. Normally with election day registration, the, the premise was if you're in line at your polling location by eight o'clock at 801, they would put a poll worker at the back of that line. And as long as you were ahead of that poll worker, you were going to get an opportunity both to register and to vote. So to mirror that scenario, you have to have your absentee or your, excuse me, your registration in that clerk's hands at that courthouse by eight o'clock on May 19th. But when you do that, you're gonna to need to accompany it with copy of a utility bill, copy of your driver's license. So if you're going that late, and we always would recommend go earlier, get it done now. But if you are going that late, uh, make sure you have all that documentation, copies of it that you can leave there so that you can complete your registration, get your absentee request all in one shot in their hands and process before eight o'clock. Can someone change party affiliation now to vote? It is too late. Thank you for that question. It's too late to change party affiliation, but let's make a quick distinction here. If you have someone that is an unaffiliated voter, that means they have not made a party determination at this point in time and they can always make that party declaration right up until uh, election day. So as they're requesting their absentee ballot, they would be making that party determination there. What are the most common questions you're getting? Uh, the, probably the most common question is people, not really a question, but just a statement. And it's that I'm just gonna go vote in person because it should be open. And I think the thing we wanna remind Idaho voters is that polling locations are not going to be open on election day. And that's not a question of whether or not we could necessarily open a door on a on a business. It's really all of the logistics that go into putting poll workers in that space, getting those volunteers to come into that space, prepping them to be safe in that space in order to accommodate your ability to come in there and cast your ballot. That is the challenge that still remains. And the timing and logistics of putting that in place is why that's absolutely not going to happen for this May primary. Now, by November, do we hope to be able to be back in that position? Absolutely, yes. We don't want to try and do this twice. Now, I wanna ask you about something that came up earlier this week. Um, what are your thoughts on Idaho Freedom Action publishing on its website the names and addresses of everyone who has requested a ballot for this election? Well, that, that uh, story came out in the newspapers, and as I was quoted in the newspapers, there's nothing we did look at it. The question was raised to us is, are they doing anything illegal? And simply staying to that point of it, they aren't doing something illegal, uh, whether it's right, wrong, or indifferent, it's not illegal. And, and there's gonna be opinions on all sides of the spectrum, and I'm not going to offer one. Um, I will say that uh, we did communicate with them. We did check with them on, on what was there. 
We made sure that what was there was the same information that uh, that others are have access to, and in that regard, they've been they've been good to work with on that side of things, and we appreciate them for that. Um, but what they're doing there isn't illegal, and if if there is an issue that folks have with it, then we would recommend that we look at what can we do statutorily to change the way that the public records laws are set, so that scenarios like that if, if the public doesn't want that to happen then the public's going to need to change the constraints under which it is happening so the way it's written then does the secretary of state's office have to supply that information if someone if anyone requests it absolutely yes okay um now the uh and also, I just want to ask the question also then uh, about the other side of this in terms of uh, protecting a voter's vote information. Um, how do you make sure that, that their vote is secure and um, that it will be counted? So if I may, for just one second, go back to the, uh, the list question. Let's be very clear that what is up there is not vote information. Now, moving on to the ballot question, when a ballot comes in as an absentee ballot, um, the very first thing that you're going to notice when you get your absentee ballot packet is the back of it has both barcodes and signatures on it. And that's how we're actually validating that the ballot that's coming back is from the person that it was requested from. There's inspections that have to happen at that level before this envelope can be opened. Once that envelope is opened, it's separated and it stays, the ballot stays in this privacy envelope. Um, and goes in and is anonymized with other ballots before it's ever removed from this sleeve and before anything can be seen. So the idea that someone might look at this and say, no, I don't like what this person voted for and remove it, that's just not happening. These are all done under observation. In many cases, these opening of these envelopes is live streamed for the public. Uh, there's, there's poll watchers in a lot of these locations that, that are volunteers that come in to help safeguard the integrity of that ballot. Chad, I want to thank you for your time. Deputy Secretary of State Chad Houck, I know that this is just a super busy time, a different year, of course, for your office and for everyone with this election. I do appreciate your time and hope everything goes smoothly. Doug, thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Well, still ahead this morning, as we've said, Idaho has never held an election like this before, entirely by absentee ballot. Up next, we'll get Ada County Clerk Phil McGrain's take on the scope of the effort to put on this primary and the response so far from voters. A lot of people have already cast their ballots in Ada County. We'll take a look at it. Gianni shows off his new workout. Uh, my only dream I want to cry, really. Plus, Ellen's little scientist. I'm very afraid that I'm going to get the coronavirus from eating too many cronuts. Weekdays at 2 on Idaho's News Channel 7. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. There's only one way to describe this season's AGT judges. Heaven. Say no more. I'm new, so I can do whatever I want. When you kiss a pig, it's good luck. Oh. You're amazing. Simon Cow, Simon Cow. I'm not gonna mess around. No! America's Got Talent premieres Tuesday, May 26th on NBC. Welcome back to Viewpoint. Today we are focusing on preparations for the May 19th primary election. We looked at what the state is doing to get ready. Now we turn 
to the state's most populous county, Ada County. My guest is Ada County Clerk Phil McGrain. Phil, thanks for your time today. Thank you, Doug. It's great to see you in this new format. Yeah, you're usually here in studio, but we're all getting used to this now. So how big of an undertaking has this been to get an all absentee ballot election ready? You know, I've really been thinking about this a lot recently, and this election is truly proving to be historic in so many ways. Not only is it the first time that we're voting all by mail, which the state of Idaho has never done, but in terms of the turnout and some of the tools that we've implemented, it truly is a historic undertaking. Um, the volume has been something we never imagined we would see. So already we've issued more ballots for this primary election than we've ever issued for a primary election before, at least in recent memory. And so um, it's it's been a massive undertaking, particularly making the shift in terms of everything. Yeah, what has been the biggest challenge? You know, other states do all mail elections. So our neighbors in Oregon and Washington are a great example, but they have the infrastructure and they've done all the planning to be able to handle that big operation. We got really short notice. There's a lot of planning that goes into elections. You've heard me describe it before as a giant event planning operation. Mm -hmm. um, so we plan everything out. Well, we got late notice from the governor's office, secretary of state's office. I was a part of those conversations and then had to pivot to this new format. And it really doing it, it has proven to be much more than we anticipated, especially due to the volume. We're still, I have crews that were in at 6 a.m. this morning entering absentee requests. Um, it's been a massive undertaking because so many people have asked for ballots. Uh, we are going to be well over 100,000 ballots issued just in Ada County alone. Just in Ada County. Wow. Okay, so you answered my question about that. Let's compare. Um, what's going on this year to the last two May primaries. I have a graphic to show here. The 2016 primary, which is most similar to this year's, we're gonna start with that. 35,000 total ballots cast, that's everything. Now, voter turnout was 15.2%. In the 2018 primary, voters cast nearly 70, 79,000 ballots. Now, this primary was the governor's race with very big contests in both parties, Democratic and Republican. Voter turnout was about 34%. And now, as you were saying, so far in the 2020 primary, the Ada County Clerk's Office, as of Thursday morning, when this program was recorded, has issued more than 82,000 absentee ballots, and you're saying, you know, 100 that voters have requested and has already received more than 29,000 of those back. So, Phil, those people have already voted. And again, in 2016, the total vote, votes of people going absentee early and voting at polling places was 35,000. Yeah, I, those numbers just show. I mean, so as of this morning, we're over 98,000. That's for Thursday morning, uh, as of Thursday morning. Uh, and that doesn't include all the requests that still need to be entered. I think one of the biggest things we've had to ask voters for in this election is just patience. And I think that's one of the things to emphasize to viewers right now is if they've requested a ballot, let's say in the last week, they may not have received it yet. And that's because we're working through so many ballots and so many requests to get them out to voters. Um, but the good news for this election that is unique is there's additional time for voters to both get their ballots and then to return them. So even though election day is on Tuesday, um, there is more time. People don't have to get their votes in by Tuesday. They actually have until June 2nd to get those back. And that's going to be really important because there's going to be many voters who won't actually have their ballots yet by Tuesday. They'll be getting them shortly, some point in the week, um, but we're not going to be able to get them all out so quickly just because of the huge volume. We're probably mailing about 6,000 a day on average. And so we're working through all those requests that have come through. And we just uh, we appreciate all the patience the community has been able to give us this election as we've worked to get these ballots out to folks. And thank you for correcting me on the number. I misspoke. You said 98,000 so far as of this morning. Yes, I uh, didn't update that in my information here on my tablet. But um, so you're expecting the fact that more people could end up voting in this primary than any other regular primary that I think there's a really high likelihood that this primary will have more votes cast than any primary in the state's history. Uh, and I think a lot of that is just highlights how historic and unique this election is. It's unique in terms of the all mail part. It's unique that this is the first time the Secretary of State's office worked hard to allow people to request their ballots online through IdahoVotes.gov. Um, and then just the circumstances. Uh, we are working hard. You know, I, I think of the first responders and the healthcare workers who are working to keep everybody in our community safe right now. 
And all the clerks throughout the state, I can say, are working to make sure everyone's vote is maintained safe, both in terms of the security of the vote, as well as just making sure everyone gets the opportunity to have a voice. I think there's a lot of interest giving the circumstances in our community for people to want to express their voice. And the ballot box is one of the best places to do that. And that's why we see so many people asking for ballots right now. Um, people who get nonpartisan ballots um, may not get as many things on their ballot as they would, might expect, right? Absolutely. That's one of the things that's unique here. It, it's a primary election. So this is actually the nomination process for candidates to be determined who's going to be on the ballot in November. Um, so it really is partisan, right? People are selecting either a Democratic ballot or a Republican ballot. There is a nonpartisan ballot, but for this election, there's not a whole lot on it. We have two Supreme Court races, but they're uncontested. So those justices are going to retain their seat either way. Um, and then locally, it depends on where you live. There may be some local levies, but even, you know, West Ada was considering a bond, but given the financial circumstances we find ourselves in, they removed that. Um, so mostly it's renewal levies that we see on the ballots for lots of the school districts around the state. So there just isn't as much activity on those nonpartisan ballots as there are on the partisan one. So how do you protect the security of an individual person's ballot? And then also how do you protect against voter fraud in this system? You know, all mail elections are unique because we're sending out ballots. It's not the same as going to the polls. And I know a lot of voters are concerned about that. We do have a lot of safety measures in terms of how we handle the requests. Um, not surprisingly with the volume, we've seen lots of people send in more than one request, but in the systems we use, we can track and monitor so that only each voter gets one ballot or gets the ballot they're supposed to. Um, but then on the back end, what's really key is when those ballots come back, voters sign an affidavit on the return envelope. And those who've seen their ballots know what I'm talking about. Um, we actually compare the signatures on those return envelopes to the signature for that voter on their registration card. Our system allows us to really quickly, I can just type in Doug Petcash or Phil McGrain, and immediately the signature from the registration card will pop up so that we can do a side-by-side -side comparison. And our staff is trained by law enforcement in terms of doing those comparisons. And every single ballot that is cast here throughout the state of Idaho will be verified in terms of those signatures to ensure that it is the person who is actually voting, um, that we can pursue any issues if there are any in terms of the signatures don't match or a signature is missing. Uh, uh, but also to make sure every vote is only cast once. Every voter gets one voice in this election. Now, I want to talk so with just a couple of minutes we have left, about a minute and a half. Your office keeps track of voter turnout by first name. Now, this is interesting. The top five first names for turning in ballots so far this election in Ada County are Betsy at 33.3%, Patty 28.8%, Roberta 25%, Joe 24.3%, Phyllis, 23.5%. Other names in the top 15 are Vernon, Leonard, Melvin, and Martha. We want to show the names in the bottom 15 for turning in ballots so far this year. And those are Braden and Mackenzie at 0%, Tanner at 0.8, Sierra at 0.9, and Connor at 1.1%. Some of the names in the top 15. Others in there are Jade, Colin, Mason, and Jackson. First of all, I guess, why do you keep track of name, first name voter turnout? And then how do you interpret those stats? Yeah, I think this highlights, we track everything and are monitoring all sorts of statistics. It's one of the ways we make sure the election is safe and that things are working smoothly. Uh, also, our staff likes to have a little fun with it, as you just saw, uh, tracking turnout by first names, just a fun way for us to share it on social media and others. I think what's really interesting and really representative of almost all elections is when you look at that top 10, uh, those names, as we like to say, they appear to be largely grandmother names, right? So older, which kind of fits uh, in terms of elections. Generally, older voters are the ones who participate the most, and you see that there. Also, it really highlights this year is historic in another way. This is the 100th anniversary of women's suffrage in the United States and the passage of the 19th Amendment. So it's no surprise that we see women leading the top of the list as almost every single election, women outvote men at every turn. Um, you know, we, you highlighted the bottom of the list. Uh, it appears to be mostly millennial names, and that's also a trend that we see in elections is we need to do everything we can to get those 20-somethings out to vote. So if you're 20 and you haven't requested your ballot, don't worry, you've still got a couple of days to do it. By 8 p.m. on the 19th, make sure to get your request in so you can vote in this election. And Phil mentioned also during the break that 
uh, there have to be at least 50 registered voters with those names to make those lists. Phil, we're out of time. I really appreciate your time this morning. Best wishes on the election. Thank you, Doug. And please, everyone take advantage of the opportunity. This is truly an historic election. It definitely is. Phil, thanks. We'll be back with some voter resources after this. Wilcox Elementary in Pocatello needed a wall built to separate the library and computer lab so that students could study and test in quiet. As a result, test scores improved dramatically thanks to your play. The Idaho Lottery has contributed hundreds of millions of dollars to Idaho Public Schools and the Permanent Building Fund. Shh. Thanks, Idaho. Healthcare organizations serving this community stand united against the spread of COVID-19. We are working together to meet the public health crisis we all are facing as a nation, a state, and a community. Our dedicated nurses, doctors, and staff are on the front line in the battle against COVID-19. Rest assured that our commitment to you, our community, has never been stronger. We are here for you. To help us help you, we're asking you to take simple but essential steps. First, please stay at home. It is critical in helping reduce the spread of the virus. Second, wash your hands often and stand away from others at least six feet. Finally, if you begin to feel sick, please call your health care provider first. Before coming to one of our clinics, hospitals, urgent care centers, or screening sites. By, by working, working together, together and caring, caring for one another, another we, we will be able, able to face this challenge together. together. This spring, a lot of us have turned to gardening. It connects you to a sense of wonder and purpose. You can grow beauty, you can grow food, you can grow habitat. You feel a deeper connection to the weather and to traditions passed on for generations, from your grandparents' vegetable garden to your own backyard. It's a joy to see people learning and sharing the simple pleasure of growing a garden. Before we go, I want to point you to a couple valuable resources for voter information. Our voter guide at KTVB.com includes a county by county ballot breakdown, a look at congressional and legislative races, as well as other primary election stories and links to voter resources, including the Secretary of State's office's IdahoVotes.gov website, which is also a great resource. You can request an absentee ballot there, then you can check your absentee ballot status, see the 2020 primary candidates, plus there's info on how to register to vote and more. We'll have full coverage of the election on KTVB.